As I lay on a beach in Papaiit, Tahiti, one morning, thinking of a new From Here to Eternity movie, starring Mother Nature and Father Time, a Klein bottle washed ashore and puffed out a Ginny, right after I'd rubbed it in just the right way. Thank you, Master. What do you wish to see or know? Anything at all, with no hurry. While I pondered this new sprung fountain of potential knowledge that had arrived in the form of the fullest bloom of the ideal female, she spread out a blanket and produced two glasses of wine from the water for us to drink of, her glowing visage wavering here and she obviously from her posture asking me what I'd like. Show me eternity, even though you are immediately alluring and inviting romantically. I can show you, for I have it all. Let us raise a glass in a toast to end from the wellspring of time. Wait, you have all of eternity, complete in its perpetual entirety? Yes, I have the whole extant shebang, as like a wondrous poem carved in stone as fixed, pre-made, and wholly existent in its eternal block, containing all past and future, with a window through which this beauteous eternity can be viewed as it passes by, or, rather, as us passing through it, whichever way you wish to consider it, but ever through a glass, brightly, in all its splendor. Where did you get it? Einstein gave it to me, and somewhere he still exists. She leaned over and gave me a moist kiss, which I returned, thinking myself perhaps too hastily wishing to undress the philosophy of time ahead of her fine silk pajamas. I'm transforming for you now. That was totally amazing. Soon, I'll unveil eternity for you, Bear. But first, my own, for I've just arrived in this all too captivating here and now in French Polynesia. My poetic self answered, getting back into form. Let actions tell what words can never pass. Pour thy rose cheeks into the secret's glass, and thy mouth onto my fair, beloved, my contritions to be lost in your morass. The universe's mantle binds us worn, tears feeding the river on which we're born. Beauty is melancholy's other side. Ah, and hell's but an ember of our senseless fears, and heaven's the rose breath of opening morn. Let us veer into deeper philosophy. My life's spirit to the causeless was near blind. If the beginning you could find, the alive, of word, phrase, and universe, thou needs not the rest of the alphabet, all's been mined. With that she bid me up and on from our reverie, leading me down the boarded pier to a hut on stilts over the turquoise ocean. We approached the hut, the sign above the door reading, Space Time. Upon entering, she walked me to what served as a window in the tropics, a square hole made in the straw wall. Here it is. Behold, it's the glorious emergence of all that was, is, and will be. This is a view of ordinary space-time. You promised me eternity. 
And where is the future and the past of it? You just viewed the past an instant ago, and at this time we have passed unto the now, and in another moment we'll arrive in the future. Behold the marvelous eternity through our window upon it. See it strong and sturdy, this solid slab set for all time, pre-designed. One of its four distances has been converted into time, via the speed of light, so that we can move through its otherwise chock-full extent of total solidity. Sturdy? Space-time's block universe consists of dynamical space and matter, each influencing the other. That's stability? Yes and no, for it thus as if we stand in a place made of jello, but I'm indeed showing you the result of Mother Nature's maternity with Father Time's paternity. This block that began from their cosmic egg produced at the radial time center of this hypers that goes on forever outward in all directions. How does a sphere that never ends even have a spherical shape? It just does. And it is as it is, as in its frozen and unchanging state, all laid out unto its minutest detail, unto the largest and the smallest. I see. But there is almost universal agreement that relativity is not a complete theory, for it doesn't take quantum effects into consideration. Since we're viewing it from the inside, the explicate collective rises and rules at our level, taking on a life of its own. We are phenomena's projected face, well painted from new men as unseen base. It's as a lamp lights up a paper shade, we figures revolving around in space. Well, you did mention emergence, meaning such as more is different and the whole is more than the sum of its parts, but where did this block come from? From what quarry was it excavated or built and buried? It was built in what to us would be all at once in the fifth dimension, lest it take forever to be completed, again, just to us. Well, even just building an ever-ending determinate block that only has a specific past and a certain future is a tremendous accomplishment. What with the foreseeing of every eventuality on forward from the Big Bang on to forever, especially the finishing of it in time, which was done even in our shortest time. I told you it was fantastic. But all its paths are fixed, predetermined. What matters where, what, when, or even who? In life's film, any narrative will do. Well, true, but we've only just seen the near future and the near past. Can you zoom out into the next dimension and show me a larger view? Sure. She enlarged our viewpoint, which was really a kind of condensing. I felt an uneasy shift. Ugh, holy cripes. I see things like tube worms that begin with a fetus and end with a corpse. Oh, horrors. Those are the world lines of you and everyone. Quick, get rid of it. Take me through my own world line, such as like a home movie run on fast forward. Okay, here we go. It will be such as just before you die when your whole life flashes before you just ahead of your merging into the timelessness of the great block extern. It's the fifth dimensional wonder of the universe. Wait, there's life after death in this block? Everything in it exists forever. Rejoice. But your goose was cooked long ago, your future eggs laid for you were aglow. And so I saw myself being conceived, yuck, and then as a baby, a toddler, a young boy, 
an adolescent, and so forth, until laying on a beach in Tahiti, then the jinni appearing. Wait, stop it, I don't want to know my future that is carved as dogma into this gargantuan tablet, upon which I've already had a glimpse of my cadaver. That's part of what has to be shown if we go on, even horrid hell and gloried heaven yon. Seekers never fear. Who's the scribe of my slab written upon? I ask whether I'm the stylus or the slate. Even I'm not so sure, of late, but I'm fond that we're both the dancer and the danced upon. Well, perhaps we can't have everything. Do you want to relive a part of your life, even in the future portion? Or go on further, to such as all the possible Big Bang starts to ends, in which you could jump to one, or even to the tenth dimensional wonder of the is of all possible realities. No, I'll take this time, for, as you say, the narrative doesn't much matter, as anyone will do. We returned to the beach, kissing and frolicking on the blanket while drinking more wine and enjoying the soft breezes caressing our bodies, happy to be returned to this wonderland drenched with the perfumes of flowers that begged our passions to be quenched again. In this lovely parentheses of eternity, on this fertile shore, love Suri drank with me pouring her cup into my soul so thirsty. Would I then gasp for heaven's paradise or eternity, then, I dare say, dogs wine better than me. Oh sweet, almond dyed fortune of love's glow, our life streams flow toward the great below. In fate's clutch, back to the block we must go, so let us liquefy long life's plateau. Show me another, more fundamental, version of time, in which the past and the future don't exist. It's difficult, for the prospects are grim. Presentism does not just amount to the assertion that only present events or entities exist, but also that the present undergoes a dynamical updating or exhibits a quality as of a fleeting swoosh, and this additional dynamical aspect is what threatens the substance of the debate between the presentist and an eternalist opponent. In other words, what is going to exist or was existent, as the presentist must refer to as to be or has been is indicated coming or going and is thus inherent in the totality of what is, and so it has no non-existence for this as nothing cannot be. Yes, as you're saying that since there is no contrast between a real future and an unreal future, for what is real or exists can have no opposite to form a contrast class. Still, what if our perceived persistence of a self-same world is an illusion? We'll still need a respite for presentism from the Einstein's seemingly unavoidable besieging relativity of simultaneity. What if we even went past the emergence quality of space as a degree of realness nevertheless, unto the complete elimination of space, leaving only time as the implicate order, an illusion of timelessness than only referring to the emergent but now totally explicate geometric time of space-time but not to a microscopic fundamental time where there would be no geometry, so that fundamental time exists but space and geometry do not. I thought you'd never ask. 
Your wish is my command, ne'er can be recalled now's bird that is flown, so love life's flight, on the winds that must blow. And then we'll get rid of space completely. Yes, but first things first. So, then, as you say, it is then possible that one can have this fundamental time, consistent with quantum mechanics, at the microscopic level, and an emergent or geometric time, macroscopically. Quantum theory and general relativity could be reconciled if we have a reason why they should apply at different levels, an emergence can provide that reason, yet, to have only time, with no space at all, emergent, explicate, or otherwise, we'll have to invent a whole new ontology, which is a heck of a lot to do and substantiate, whereas, we could just chill on the beach or roam the island, savoring the favored here and now. We can do both, for a good way to know what is life, is to live it, as well as think it. She had taken me to another hut, the signage reading, discrete construction of now. We looked out the window hole in the wall at now, or at least as close as we could get to now, it's likely having gone past by the time we got the news of it. Reality is created anew at every now? Well, updated really, from the previous now that is wholly consumed by the process, so, yes, it amounts to a becoming as new. Okay. I didn't think every now was created from scratch as some kind of creationist miracle, so, it's the constituents that do all the work, which is how Occam would have it, but what does doing the work mean? It means a process. What are the basic, no longer divisible, constituents, at heart? Quantum monads, bits with various states of what we might call energy or just levels. The id of reality comes from bit, via an information process. Mass, energy reduces to information as its final subdivision? Equivalence of mass, energy to information has been shown. Where's the hardware, of what must be a kind of quantum computer? There's nothing here. If there was hardware, then there would no longer be just a now. The hardware would remain across time. So, the bits do it all themselves? Yes. So, Yogi, the future's not what it used to be anymore? No matter how one tries to shake from boughs the fruits of time's truth from the tree of nose, computation makes not yet the morrows, there's naught else but loan, resultant nows. We looked out the hut's window, into what was not a distance, but a past that was just past, except for the sun, which was a whole eight minutes behind. Space has been eliminated. We see only the inside of the mind. We ride the crest of a continuously emerging wave of time that is carrying us into the future, at the speed of light. We observe only its wake, and it is this wake which space-time physics is modeling. What we observe is as a kind of holographic representation of events which no longer exist. Cripes. Nature is frugal. We are not objects, but are a process and its nexus is the now. It is nothing more than an eternal sequence of events following one upon the other in an orderly, causal, and generative fashion. Process philosophy is all about relationships, of which we see the hint in the quantum realm, everything connected to everything, as if all right on top of each other, in no space. Our anticipation's imagination suggests the future, while we're in the now of our present sensation, our memory holding a bit of the past, this smoothly rolling now blended by the mind. The delight is such that none of the three could produce alone. This arrangement is still determinate, although not predeterminate. Well, 
we can't eat our cake and still have two. The consistency is a good thing, and the impossible random would be a horror. Spring's new year unfolds the garden's jewels, the sweet rose, my peary, and us fools. Yester now expires gifting the present, to be naught to speak outside of what rules. We clutch the skirt of heaven, on it borne, while the day stars dimmed are at night tree born. If time lives, and grants us a fresh morn, will still the universe's dress adorn. I get it now, my fair creature twixt human and angel, about the informational monads, the only possible fundamental is what has no parts, as a simple, continuous function, which necessitates a monad, for there isn't anything simpler, thus its assemblies of the id can only be of the more and more composite and complex, in the higher and higher informational patterns that the bits make as the nows ever go on. And the monads have to be, we should jot, because nothing cannot, which is the truth we've found that thus no longer needs any proof, which demonstrates the power of philosophy. So, my jasmine bloomed and fairy born, upon whose glowing breasts I rest my head this morn, we cast not to the wind but flow as times born, thus there are two times about which we needn't ask. The one that hasn't come and the one that's past, for we are of the now, and, at that, ever only seeing the inside of the brain from the inside. Yes, traveler through time. While life flows like water and blows like wind, our idyllic now prevails, unsurpassed. So then. In the great silence amid the great absence of the so-called true vacuum is the now here of time as the nowhere of space, and to think it was said that our being blocks the view of the ultimate, nor to gaze at it could we ourselves acquit, that even the wise couldn't step beyond their nature, leaving all mother's sons standing helpless before it. Indeed, now here is nowhere, a slight rearrangement that's still of the same letter sequence, representing a truth so simple that even a child could understand it, that we must relinquish all future and past, which may induce melancholy.
If I indulge the yearning and reflect it back, then from birth we can look forward to being host to woe, and then to giving up the ghost. Ah yes, sad, but happy are they who quickly burnt a toast, and blessed are they who ne'er came to the roast. Ha ha. Live. Life's doom is to air sleep in the tomb. Without wine, friends, or love, an empty whom. Come close, I will lift the dark secret's veil. Never again can withered flowers bloom. Even the smoke from an M's ash fades away. The warp with the wolf and we've burnt to clay. How many beautiful hearts have melted here, where in heaven's cosmic vault wefts their sway. There are no wares, my island man. The believers believe, from fear of hell's misery, lured onward by heaven's reward to be, yet he who lives real, and thus knows what is, never fires his heart from chaff's smoke tree. Oh, meddling thoughts that harp on faith's plea, my cheeks glow red from Jinni's grape tree, so to your face I throw my other hand, and drop you into sleep, O oh fantasy. Lay waste to the rites of prayer and fasting, shatter faith's pious claims never lasting, slam fast the gate on myth spells and myth takes surviving. Live, and be kind to all of life's casting. Here, here, and there's more cheer in a single now full than in the vault of heaven hollow as a skull. Yes, tropic man. Why fret over spilling drops of sin from life's temptation glass filled to the brim? Play with the imaginary friend, him, what is mercy for but to save thy skin? Why would the all-knowing, loving expert compose with power his designed concert, then decompose his grand magnificat? Because there's none such beyond the turret, The best of all that is below the moon and above the fish's beauties commune, in this life are poured and sipped, all else foregone, from your Persian martyr-e, raptured noon to noon. Rent, the mask of sorrows shrouding doom's face, sheared, the cloth of grief sidling chase. Feast on my lips, body, and verse, drain life's bank, ere earth enfold thee in a last embrace. Thin as the air, the now is time's gift rare, an ethereal sprite whose flow is swift. Morning springs us over the wasteland's brink, and on time's sand we the oasis drink. Life's strange caravan through the desert winds back toward nothing, drink, afore the stars sink. We have solved the mystery, and have found that beginnings and spaces cannot be, so what goes round is near all things generating, for there's no point to impart a design, so drink, to naught more we're bound. Naught is left. We butterflies, on the edge of forever's flight, spread fast our wings on the ocean of light, that is the wake of the time griff wave, of no breadth, mass, or space that is seemingly made, all is of a holographic light dream, as products time and time again by time's means, as bubble bubbles blown and burst, through the frames of time that quench our thirst. Time future, time present, and time past are not all at once, but only as nows, with not any of them to last. The glorious light flashes us into being shone, as the dilated broadcast of time's nows becoming known. Hear the friends, lovers, and flowers that be, parentheses within eternity. What the meaning to this play will be fit, from dirt to dust within the script as it's being writ. The wise in search have thrown themselves to waste, experience alone is the benefit. Don't worry, be happy. Worries seldom come true, but, if they do, thus they had to. 
so in them one must stew. Past imperfect points to a future tense, yet ever only now does the wheel brew. Ere fate fells us dried up like an old leaf, let the wine course through our veins of life so brief. Ne'er for treasured gold will you be dug up, nor even sought by an impoverished thief. Drain thy goblet's nectar of the moon's shine, while the light sparkles in this now of eye. Reign with night's queen and drink deep the king's wine, for the morrow may not find you in time. Now, to our friends and successors, when you with such lively tread make your way through the garden of the dead and reach the flowered bed where we made one and now lie, turn down an empty glass and break some bread. Then, unto love's moonlight tryst, arm in arm, after taking delight in each other's charm, raise thy glasses once more in blessing, and cheer the ones who lived and died without alarm. Life is a web of who's, why's, what's, and how's, stretched in time between eternal boughs. Gossamer threads bear the beads that glisten, each moment a sequence of instant now. 